Hello and welcome to another episode of All Elite Arcade, your home for video game discussions here at AEW Games. I'm Evil Uno, always here with my friend, The Chugs. How are you doing, Chugs? I'm doing great. And Uno, per usual, always a pleasure to be on here with of you talking course. about uh, anything and everything video games, baby. Oh, Let's go. Of course, it's the month of, month of October. If you're watching our video format, youtube.com slash AEW Games, you might realize we're both in very cold fronts. Uh, it, it is it is cold up north uh, at this very moment. The seasons are turning, uh, but it's Dude, perfect Uno, for video can I games. Can I, can I tell you? I'm yes. so sorry. Can I tell you how great it feels to be in a hoodie, dude? I for love it. Seven years of living in Florida. I've got all these hoodies that I look like. Got my 117 Ooh. Master Chief hoodie ready to go. I haven't been able to wear this in what feels like years. Uh, but now that now that we're up in the Northeast... I get that that fall and winter season, which I'm so excited about. Because there's nothing better than being all bundled up. It's like snowing outside and you're inside playing video games. Oh, yeah. That's just the best. The this absolute is, best. Genuinely, my favorite time of the year is the fall. Uh, one, yeah, me too. sweaters. I'm, I'm a big hoodie guy. I love myself yep. a long sleeve. I don't like sweating in general. So, like, no. that, that seems incredible. Plus, it's like horror season, the fall, the yes. leaves, all that. Uh, as a kid, man, I used to always want to live down south in Florida because I always assume I didn't want winter and stuff. And thankfully, I never did the move. But because of our, our travels, a lot of times we end up like down south for, for most of like December, January and such. Yeah. Um, it makes me miss seasons. So I, I'm sure to you, like especially because like a December, January is just a bunch of like humidity in Florida. Whereas instead yeah. you have like it feels festive. It feels different when you're up north. And then, of course, uh, us who are homebodies every now and then and play our video games, there's nothing yeah. better than this sweater business. Nothing better. Nothing it is. better. It's so, so nice. I, I love the seasons. I love this. I, I miss them dearly. Well, uh, now we get to live them. And uh, uh, we get to live video games because we've been playing them. Mm. Uh, we're we're, we're, bu we're back on the train of playing video games. There was a, a short yes. stint where both of us didn't get to play a whole lot. I ended up playing uh, a decent amount, actually. Uh, uh, starting with, uh, I said last week I would get into Metaphor, the most recent game from Atlas. That is the uh, Atlas, the people that made Persona. You might know them from Persona 5, uh, Persona 4, 3. I could keep listing the Personas, but I think you get the idea. Um, so they just recently, oh, they also made Catherine, which uh, I don't know if you played that. That's a really weird story slash puzzle game. Anyways, this one's way more Persona based. It's an RPG uh, uh, turn based, but as well with an act development. So as you're walking in like uh, um, the scenes, the dungeons, you can actually physically attack your enemies to either get some damage and stun them so that you can go into battle uh, uh, in turn base with an advantage with a little bit of health taken down. And then if you're strong enough, you could straight up just kill them in like a third part person attack mode which is a, a very welcome change i think to to like the, the previous model uh but uh uh and, and i will talk more about other stuff but as far as combat this does not differentiate that much for persona it's still based on like uh you have your set party of characters and they get secondary uh uh you know in persona they were personas it was like giant like uh, uh mythical beasts from another world that you could like use to your advantage in this one uh i believe they're called uh oh i should have taken a note of this but like i believe it's like achievements or something like that and it's you know you the achievement of magic the achievement of wealth the achievement of of hope the achievement of whatever and they're like god representations of these like virtues and so you can assign these virtues in a menu and with that you can start developing more skills you know, uh, uh, some okay. of them are based on healing. Some of them are more combat heavy. Some are defensive. Some are, are just to unlock like uh, um, passive uh, stuff so that you can help your party. And so the combat's very uh, uh, similar to Persona. But one thing that I like so much about this game is that it is so stunning to look at. Um, per uh, Persona, all of the previous games... Very heavy-handed on story. Uh, this one is yeah. no different. A and they've always had a very uh, um, unique way to uh, uh, involve UI in your, your video game. Like, part of what makes Persona so cool is, yes, it is a grindy RPG, but 
the second you beat something, there's all these animations that start up. The the UI for telling you like your distribution of points is all that is so involved and so animated that you never really get bored of it. Uh, it's the same with metaphor. I I've had more fun and have been more impressed by just opening a menu and flipping through like the the like load save settings uh, uh, um, r- inventory because. They make such stunning UI, uh, and they have such a grasp on their art style, like that anime art style that they've done. Uh, it is beautiful. Uh, and and so, just so everyone knows, on top of being close to a Persona game, this one does have a different setting. It's uh, way more fantasy-based. Uh, it's like swords, shields. Uh, as of yet, my understanding, no guns or anything like that. It's way more like combat-heavy and, and situated shit. It's kind of like in a Dark Ages period um and while i haven't gone super far into it it is very much about like a king uh passing away because he w- he was murdered by someone and they're not being someone to take over the throne and so and, and that's a slight spoiler but uh, don't worry about it uh, it's so very early into this this could be like an hour and 30 uh, uh experience and uh but there is actually a secret son and you are representative of that son and you are trying to go to his funeral so that you can announce his uh his uh inclusion in in uh in the the, the participation of, of being the next king uh and of course then from there it will it evolves into like a story of deceit a story of uh of yep. all kinds of stuff so it's been super super visually pleasing to look at uh the combat is more of the same but i'm into that especially if you're into jrpgs uh it's heavy on that and the story's been very very good uh in the first five hours so it's a, a high recommendation for me if you're into those persona games uh and if you're looking for a game that uh well if you're looking for a game that you could spend the next two months playing because it's 130 yeah. hours a hundred percent you can play this game uh definitely go try metaphor if uh, any of that interests you um other than that uh, uh i've just been on my mobile games i finally got my hands back on some fortnite uh I, i've been away for the fortnite playstation mobile? Fortnite no mobile. so here's the thing uh canadians aren't allowed to have fortnite mobile it's what? it's U.S. and uh, Europe only. Canada did not get the. Uh, wow. I just realized I could just VPN it and probably get it, uh, which just go. made me realize I could have been playing Fortnite for the last month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm real disappointed in myself. Uh, but I, I jumped a little a little bit into it uh, again. It's got the fright mares every uh, Halloween season. They release some Halloween skins. Uh, they they spruce up the map with like pumpkins, skeletons, and stuff. So it's very festive, and uh, they have specific missions. Uh, in this one, it's uh, the 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 main new character is Billy the saw um, a doll yes. on a tricycle. Yes. Oh, so, amazing! So Billy's getting his time. So you can you can fight him. You can use him as a weapon. Uh, you can use a chainsaw from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is super useful. Um, and and that and as always, Fortnite. They, every week they'll expand upon it, so they'll probably add more stuff this week. Uh, they added uh, horror skins recently. Uh, Edward Scissored Hands. Uh, um, they just added Disney villains, so you can get Hook, Cruella, all that. And I'm sure they will add more as well. So um, that's awesome. I'm, more, I'm I'm just glad again back into Fortnite. It was it was such a habit for me, and now I I. I, I honestly missed playing it, so it's been nice to jump back in. And they just also added a new horde mode, which if you played a horde mode in any video game, Ooh. it's great in Fortnite as well, uh, and a very easy way to get your levels. That's really good to know, Uno, because I love horde modes. Uh, yeah, hey, games, might whether be a... whether it's Halo or Gears, like so. That's that's awesome. Might that's, be a good time so for really you to fun. try. Might be a good I time know. for you to jump in. Uh, Chugs, what you've been playing? What you've been up to? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So um, once again, I know it is the spooky season, but I'm still I'm, I'm being patient and I'm waiting. I'm waiting to play mm-hmm. Silent Hill 2 remake until I'm a little bit closer to Halloween. I think I'm going to do some streams of showcasing this game easily. The game I'm looking forward to playing the most coming up. But I did, as mentioned, I've talked about it for weeks and weeks on, on this on this podcast. But I finally, Uno, I finally finished Black Myth Wukong, um, which is game number 63 uh, that I've beaten on stream. So but very, very happy to finish that game. It took me about 30 streams uh, to beat Black Myth Wukong, and I did 
as far as I know, um, everything. So, um, again, I actually did kind of want to heavily dive in uh, to some spoilers for the end of the game. So just a warning. Yes, uh, we've spoiler. had a discussion. You know, uh, we, we, we've been very, very gun shy when it comes to spoilers. Well, we have. We're, not going, we're not going to ruin games. Don't worry about it. But sometimes yes. we want to go a little more in depth. So from now on, when you see this. It's serious business. It's serious business. You're, we're getting yeah. we're getting the real news here. We're jumping in. We're <laughs> going to be spoiling some of Black Myth Wukong for sure. <laughs> so, um, again, to dive into the end of this game, first of all, I explored virtually every corner of this game. Like, I, I was so obsessed with trying to complete my journal, finding, like, all 90 of the lesser enemies, all the chief enemies, all the kings, as many characters as I could find. But I did discover that after finishing the game... I think there are two characters that do pop in the journal once you start New Game Plus, which, by oh. the way, not, but yeah, which, by the way, not to jump all over the place, but I'm generally speaking not a New Game Plus player. Mm -hmm. Lots of times I'll finish a campaign and it's like, okay, that was awesome. I, I'm, I'm good to go. I can move on to the next thing. I think casually I'm going to continue to play Black Myth Wukong uh, and definitely do a New Game Plus run. In addition to wanting to have that complete journal, I just, I'm not ready to be done with it yet. I, I really <laughs> am not, not even close to being sick of it. I won't do that on stream, though. I'm going to go back to my five-game cycle, so next week I'll have a wide variety of stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. But in, in regards to this game, once again, I know I've said it a million times, but even after finishing it, I more so believe this game should absolutely be on everyone's game of the year list. I mean, it's just, it's so, so incredibly well done. Game science, for them to figure out a triple-A Souls-like action RPG adventure so, so well in their first real attempt is wild to think about. Absolutely wild. Mm -hmm. And based on the success of this game, I'm sure that we're either going to get some DLC or hopefully a sequel at some point. But um, so the very, very end is apparently I had heard, generally speaking, if you don't do everything, you'll do one playthrough of this game, you fight the final boss, and then you do another run to get the optional... Uh, major boss and then the real final boss so because i did everything i was able to fight that really difficult optional boss and then the the real final boss but to, to jump into the the optional boss his name is erlang um he he is the he is the enemy that you encounter at the very beginning of the game when you're playing as sun wukong in the tutorial and uno my god this boss <laughs> So, oh, it's so he's so... the character that you fight like while the, the 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 giants are behind the mountains and stuff. Yes, in the clouds oh, and all that stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, this this optional boss, he yeah, he is the toughest optional boss. But the interesting thing too is to get to him. In addition to having to collect a bunch of different items throughout the game and do all the optional bosses and things like that, you find this area um, in in like chapter three or chapter four where you have to go back to, it's this giant wall, this giant mural, which is really cool. And then you end up going in to that area and it, it, you find this completely optional area. And there at the end of that map, uh, the end of this secret is Erlang. And Uno, the, they test every single aspect of this game in this boss fight. Like you have to play perfectly. You have to have a strategy. Um, you have to use all of your spells. He hits so hard. It's, it's so fast. <laughs> He's an unbelievable boss. I, I would say, yeah, Erlang and Yellow Long were probably the, the two toughest bosses I fought in my first playthrough. Um, and then there's a, there's a horrifying moment where when I did beat uh, Erlang, I was so excited. You go right into another phase where this phase, you're a giant. You're like just oh. absolutely massive and you're fighting other giants. It's such a cool cinematic fight. But the whole time, I didn't even really get to enjoy it because I kept thinking, if I die and I'm have gonna to do, do it this all over again. phase again, <laughs> I'm going to be so crushed. But fortunately, they do make it pretty easy, uh, okay. especially compared to that first phase of, of Erlang. So you can kind of enjoy it. But again, such a cool cinematic fight. You fighting as a giant way up in the clouds. Um, so again... One of the most challenging bosses, if not the most challenging boss in Black Myth of Wukong, but also cinematically just so, so impressive and so amazing. I was um, so curious because if that blows it back to you, because I'm, I'm only midway, you're now finished, so I'm about yeah. 30 hours into it. And uh, yeah. I thought like as great as this game is, the opening, I'm like a god in the clouds. And I was, I was like, how do... 
do we ever get back to that phase? And uh, to know that we get to do that, and then also those giants are actually part of what you end up battling is very cool. That's very interesting. It is. It's really, really cool. It's so unexpected. Mm -hmm. I I didn't think in a million years you were were gonna get to do that. So it was cool and a completely different combat, much simpler. And like I said, much easier to to be able to finish that that second phase. That was almost like this just really cool cinematic experience Mm -hmm. for sure. Um, But then, so again, if Erlang was the most difficult, um, I do think the actual final boss is one of the most like pleasing boss fights I've ever had Mm -hmm. and easily one of the coolest bosses I've ever faced before. So you end up finally, once you retrieve all of these relics, you go there with Baji into this different area with the the old monkey who was, who was kind of taking you through the memories of Wukong. You're on this lake and the sun is setting and it's really cool. He's explaining everything and you're on this canoe or this boat and the old monkey is explaining everything. And then Baji finally realizes, he goes, Hey, I thought we needed six relics. We only have five. And they said, yeah, the sixth relic is Wukong's mind. It's his thoughts. So you go to this area where you're on this, I would say, little island surrounded by water. Like I said, the sun is setting. And there is the stone monkey um, who represents the final piece of Wukong. And the stone monkey has decided, oh, uh, the destined one has all my powers. I want my powers back. I want to go back to being Sun Wukong. So you have to fight the stone monkey, which is really, really cool. Super fun fight. Um, who brings in another stone monkey at one point. There's a there's a double fight. And I think if you don't do the Erlang fight, it ends after that. I, I believe so. Okay. But because I did the Erlang fight, you defeat the stone monkey and you think, oh, I got this. And all of a sudden, all this power starts uh, going towards Sun Wukong and then he becomes the original Sun Wukong. So you're standing there as the destined one, looking like Sun Wukong, but fighting the real Sun Wukong. <laughs> and he has all of the moves that you do in just a way cooler way. Like they did <laughs> such an amazing job of making the, this Wukong final boss fight the coolest. Like I couldn't help but laugh and smile as I'm going through this fight. For example, at one point when you're fighting the great sage Sun Wukong, trying to get all his powers back, he succeeds for a second. When he does that, there's a point like halfway through where you go to drink out of your gourd to heal yourself, and he immobilizes you when it goes into a cutscene. And Sun Wukong just like casually walks up, picks up the gourd, kind of looks at it, shakes it a little bit, takes a sip, gives it back to you, and then the fight continues. So cool. <laughs> it's just so cool. <laughs> there's, a, there's a point where he like knocks you down if you're going to do something and you're down and he kicks up your staff and he gives you your staff back. Like, here you go. I'll give it back to you. Come on. They just made him so awesome. Um, now, not as difficult as Erlang. Definitely not as difficult. It only took me a few tries. Um, but again, the cinematography of everything, the story of everything, the fact that the the destined one is replacing Sun Wukong. Like Sun Wukong is almost this idea of... This, this character that they want to keep going. So if you do all of that stuff, then you become this version of, of Sun Wukong at the very end. But such a impressive, cool, amazing experience was that last boss fight. Again, I, I the, the game to me is absolutely a 10 out of 10, and it never feels like it's dragging. The bosses keep getting more and more impressive. Uh, the story is incredible. I seriously want to read Journey to the West now. Uh, because of how much I enjoyed this game. So, holy crap, Uno. It, it's so good. So, so I, awesome. I'm so curious to see what you think. I can't uh, wait to get, to get there, for area. sure. I, I'm fascinated yeah. with it, too, because like a lot of these like combat-focused games where you're fighting monsters, it just ends up where the last monster is just the biggest-looking thing. Or, or for yeah. example, it almost feels cheap. Whereas this one, being almost a cinematic fight where it makes fun of everything it's established before, your yes. staff, the gourd, actually your own powers, and like yeah. he, he's the actual symbol of what you're trying to achieve. I think that's very, very cool for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's all, and he goes through every single stance. Yeah. Again, uses all the spells, ring of fire, immobilize, rock solid, a pluck of many. He uses everything. Mm. Um, it's it's really, really cool to experience and see kind of how Sun Wukong does what you've learned throughout the game. Mm-hmm. It's it's really cool. I'm, d- I'm really definitely going to try to finish it before end of the year. We're yeah. October. Oh, well, we're late October already. Man, I, that means I got a month and a half before we start thinking about these lists. I'm going to try to beat right? it in the next oh, month and a half. Gonna try to beat yeah. it in the next <laughs> yeah. month and a half. 
Thankfully, but there's yeah. less of that than there is of metaphor left. So I think I think I think I can do it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But but that was um that was game number sixty three. Like I said. So now for anyone interested, I'm gonna jump back into this five game cycle that I that I do on Twitch, and I try to keep like a different genre for each section. But now uh, next week I'll have a bunch to talk about with The Witcher Three Wild Hunt, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, yep. Dark Souls Two, Scholar of the First Sin, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and the original. Silent Hill 2. Not Ooh. Silent Hill 2 remake, but the original. Oh, you're going to you're uh, play in preparation for Halloween week and do the remastered. I, I am. Well, actually, it was a part of my five-game cycle up until Shadow Black. of the Earth Tree came out and Black Myth Wukong. So that's all I've been playing. Oh, yeah. The, you've the been, you've had a cycle good... has been on a massive hiatus. Yeah, you've been on a good three months of third-party action games for sure. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, we're definitely going to be talking uh, Silent Hill in the next coming weeks. But uh, after this break, we'll be talking to you about the news of the week. And we're back. Welcome back to All Elite Arcade, your home for video game discussions. Hey, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys know this. It's uh, late October. Late October. And uh, we just hit a couple milestones, haven't we, Chugs? A couple of huge milestones. Uh, because um, October 18th is a very, very important day in the history of video games. Um, they're ce celebrating two anniversaries. One being the 39th anniversary of the original Nintendo Entertainment System, and number two being the 66th anniversary of the very first video game. So it, first of all, it's so cool to me that both land on the same day, mm -hmm. um, just because of how obviously influential both of these things are. First of all, starting with um, the 66th anniversary of video games. Uh, once again, many historians Many historians consider Tennis for Two, made by William Hickenbotham, to be the very first video game ever created. The idea being that there were moving graphics on a screen and it was made for entertainment. Mm -hmm. This was on a, a tiny oscilloscope and it was um, displayed at Brookhaven National Laboratory. So the reason they did this is lots of times, obviously, they would showcase different technology and the computers and thing like, uh, things like that. And William said, you know what, I want to make something that like attracts the young crowd. Mm -hmm. I, I want to do something with a computer to make people go, whoa, what, what, I didn't know a computer could do this. So he made Tennis for Two. Um, and all it was, it was like the, the early origins of like a Pong. Oh, yes. There was like a line in the middle of the screen and just a, a floating ball that would go back and forth, similar to Pong, but not quite, where all you would do is just press one button on one of the controllers and it would shoot the ball over to the other side so two people could play it. There was a line out the door for this thing. Um, and it, it's so interesting because people didn't really realize what they had until many years later, mm -hmm. obviously. So they tore it down like right away. But, but again, for tennis for two, uh, again, what many people consider to be the first true video game that was made October 18th, 1958, which is really cool. Incredible. And I know, I do know it did so well the first year that the next year in, in 1959, they did the same thing Only it was on like a bigger screen and there was like, um, uh, like gravity that you could add or okay. something like that. But I, I always celebrate that day because that, that game is so important. And like I said, many people consider that the, the real start. Of course, there's prehistory with pinball and birdie the brain and OXO and all that stuff. But I think tennis for two is the first, the first true video game. So in I, home I thought too, that was right? So cool. Like on a computer that you can actually play, whereas everything else was like a cabinet or, or uh, a toy rather than an entertainment system or. Sure, sure. It, well, well, this was still on a on a massive computer. It yeah. was on like a very very small screen. But lots of times when they had um, video game demonstrations or like again the the precursor for what became a video game, it would oftentimes be uh, someone just showcasing the power of of a computer. Okay. Like, like for example, I believe OXO was used with like light bulbs instead of like an actual screen. Yeah. Whereas William Hickenbotham made this purely for entertainment. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, let's see how it does. Let's have, let's have people uh, play this game. So just really, really cool. I, um, I'd be really curious to find, because you, you're, you're about to say it, but Nintendo releasing it on the same day, I almost would, I, I would love to know if Nintendo did that intentionally. For sure. You know what the wild thing is? I really don't think they did. I, I really pure I, happenstance, I think right? It was pure. That's what it feels like. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's it's possible. It'd be very cool if that was the case. Um, 
especially considering how important the Nintendo Entertainment System was. We mm -hmm. just talked about this last week. The video game industry as we know it would not be the same if it not wasn't for the NES. Yeah. Um, after the, the video game crash of 83, people, seriously, news stations all across the country were treating video games like, hey, remember this fad that was popular for you know a couple years? Well, just like we expected, uh, it, it's going to come and go, and video games are no more. Then, mm -hmm. then the NES came around and, and just changed video games forever. So um, it's it's just it's so so cool that both of those things lined up so well, especially considering in many ways they're both equally as important. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure like so, Nintendo at the time never knew how important their introduce like their intro into the gaming console world would be thirty plus years later because right we talked about it last week if it wasn't for them we wouldn't have what we have today or we definitely no. it wouldn't be the the giant media empire that it is in 2024 where i don't know if it still is but the last few years was by far the largest media entity was video games beyond music yeah. beyond movies beyond television like uh, combined um, combined yeah it just yeah. generates way more money uh, and yeah. genuinely like there's a movie that comes out every week there's probably two three movies and there's probably un independent movies that come every week but there yeah. isn't nearly as many as video games and video games we're now at a point where we would get one cool game every i don't know month now i would how how can you ever keep up there's people making video games in their basements that are, are incredible experiences. There's people on yeah. full AAA teams that are dropping and they're, they're dropping every week, two, three games a week uh, of high caliber. And then probably hundreds of other ones too. Uh, and that's all because yeah. of like Nintendo's introduction to that. So they probably had no idea that they, they were going to kickstart this whole revolution. Um, right. And, and, and it's so, it's so amazing to see how far, video games have come in such a short time 66 mm -hmm. years is not a long time it's nothing it's really not to, to, to think about like tennis for two and then again black myth wukong it's unbelievable mm -hmm. the, the progress that's been made i can't wait to see what video games are going to look like 20 years from now i can't even to be honest i don't think i can imagine it because i can't yeah same five years ago i was like i don't know what the future of games is and then like controller feedback started happening and i was like oh okay this is it and now we have vr already so like what really what is there left uh and i'm very exactly. curious to, i'm very curious to, to find out and I, I i can guarantee you this uh both me and chugs will be there for the journey for sure for sure yes, we will. Uh, 20 years yes, from now will. i will 100 percent still be playing video games oh 100 percent. i've already <laughs> said i'm gonna be old man chugs oh yeah old oh man yeah. Chugs. yeah if if twitch or whatever <laughs> twitch format is still around you'll yeah. see my old ass playing video games for sure oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> um so uh october uh big milestones but there's also been some good news this week uh, uh and some bad news uh well let's start off with, with the good news uh xbox yeah. came out with a partner showcase this week which was weird because i don't remember it being advertised it felt it felt like it just came out of nowhere i'm 99 percent sure it did just come out of nowhere S okay. same thing where like i had heard about it the day before it happened yeah, so so they had like a thirty minute uh, representation of their third party. Uh, um, uh, it, it was a partner showcase, but then they also had a Xbox wire for everything. So, for example, any of the games we link we talk about here, you can also go at length and see developer interviews, more gameplay and stuff. So, if you are interested in any of that stuff, do go check out the Xbox partner preview uh, and Xbox wire. There's way more information on all of this stuff, but. Uh, for something that was unannounced, uh, and also I of, often forget the strength of the Xbox. They had a lot of real like titles that I was like, this whole thing is based around what I like. In a yeah. way that I was, I was like, I, did I just forget that Xbox rules? Like, yeah. there. Um, so, anyways, here, here's here's some of the stuff, and we'll go at length on some of them. Um, first of all, they started with. Alan Wake's DLC that is coming out next week, October 22nd, so the day after this podcast comes out, aka I will be talking about it likely next next yeah. podcast. I'm a huge Alan Wake guy. I waited all of the, the, the 10 years that it took for Alan Wake 2 to come out. I played the last Night Springs DLC. Well, they just uh, released a trailer and date 
uh, for the Lake House, the last piece of DLC that's supposed to be for Alan Wake 2. Um, it is a very horror-focused one, whereas the previous ones were episodic and almost comedic and playing with the quirky characters. This one uh, bridges the gap between between Control and Alan Wake 2. Uh, it uses some of the, uh, the, the titular villain from uh, Control is teased within this DLC, and uh, uh, they, they did a little interview about they really double down on it being a horrifying experience. You're fighting dis like disgusting beings. They've they've uh, I the thing I'm most curious about too is that Alan Wake Two had a lot of like jump scare stuff that wasn't even jump scare as much. It was just like clipping in a half second of a of a face like popping in uh, uh, because you were dying or something. Like they really contextualized it in a way that the scares work with what you're actually physically playing rather than just like building in. Uh, suspense through music and then just throw yeah. in like a, a person yelling at you. Uh, so I'm very curious to see uh, what kind of horror they come in here. But uh, yes, Remedy showcase uh, Lake House and it looks great. It does. It looks horrifying. It really, really does. Mm. And, and every time I see these trailers for this, this DLC coming out for Alan Wake 2, it reminds me, it slaps me right in the face of how badly I have to finish this game. Yes. I, yes. I'm, I'm like five or six hours into Alan Wake 2, and then obviously as this happens all the time where other games pop up or whatever. But yeah, th this this DLC looks awesome. The Lake House DLC looks great. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, uh, later on in the... the uh, I'm not going to follow it in order just because I think it, it, it makes a ton of sense to talk about this. But Remedy, at one point, uh, was working on a multiplayer game, and the... Uh, the, the, the Zyka, or like the general... Uh, consciousness on it was that it probably wasn't going to be I, I, people thought it was going to be shelved well it seems that's not the case because they actually uh came out and showcased a three-player co-op game uh within the bureau so if you're if you're a control fan this is a, a part of the the federal bureau uh where where you can go through like other worlds and stuff uh it's a three-player co-op first person shooter within that world uh online multiplayer uh it is called uh fbc firebreak and it will come out early next year there was no uh, uh immediate uh, date but very interesting because a lot of people thought that remedy were done uh, uh their foray into uh multiplayer and this is their first ever multiplayer game and also their first ever first person shooter it's a very interesting it's still within the same universe so if you're a remedy head like i am it will probably attach itself to the to the, the larger uh um storylines that they've been developing and uh it, it looks obviously it's stunning because it's it's fe it's featured in that cool setting but it very it looks very interesting from the mechanics they've showed yeah, yeah, and and Remedy, God, they never disappoint, man. Never, they they really don't. What what an unbelievable group. Uh, another one, and I believe this is the one, uh, was revealed was Kronos: The New Dawn, and if I remember correctly, this is the new game by Bloober Team, who just made Silent Hill. They're making their own horror game. Uh, this one was purely cinematic, so we didn't get to see if it's a first person or it's going to be a third person uh, horror game. Uh, but they are now making their own IP, which I think is very interesting because they've made a lot of fantastic remakes. They uh, obviously have a knack for like taking something old and, and putting a new uh, coat of paint on it. And so I'm very yeah. curious to see what Kronos is going to look like. From the cinematics, it looks very interesting. Uh, um, it, it, it like features like an almost... like. Uh, at one point, I thought it was a Bioshock thing because it has a lot of its, like, visual aesthetics, uh, for sure, with, like, a, a, a deep-sea diver helmet and such. Uh, but uh, that is announced in cinematic and will be coming out sometime next year. Yeah, yeah, definitely excited for that one. Uh, they also, a lot of games for me as well. Uh, like a Dragon, Pirate Yakuza, yeah. and Hawaii was announced just recently at at a uh, at a like a dragon convention of sorts uh and they've just gone and jumped into a in-depth look at the naval combat which if you didn't know this one the yakuza games are are, are, are mostly about combat then they went into uh, uh a, a turn-based thing this one is pirate base 
I don't know the context of how, but that's the beauty of Yakuza. They can do anything. And yep. they really showcase like naval combat. You're 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 sailing your ship, you're shooting cannons at the others, you're you're latching onto another ship, jumping your your crews over top, having battles that looked a lot like uh dynasty warriors at That's one what point I thought. I thought the same thing yeah as soon as they're yep. doing the battles i was like oh this looks like i'm majima the character from yakuza's uh but i'm i'm purely having a, a, a different type of combat than what is usually in these video games it looks super interesting uh they showcased even more of our friend samoa joe uh i guess he is called the pirate king uh uh maybe insinuating he's not a bad guy at least for the little bit that it's in there it might he might be like someone that you uh you learn from uh, or something it looks very interesting uh and that's only a menu part of what's probably going to be in that game there'll probably be so much more mini games uh they also announced a date if i remember correctly uh it, i believe it comes out in february uh of next year so very very soon yeah. Uh, yeah, very yeah I, believe, I think you're right. You know, I think it's February 21st. Yes, I believe that's what it yeah. is. Uh, yeah. So very, yeah. very excited for that one. Uh, I cannot wait to play that. Me too. It it looks the the combat, the hand to hand combat on the ships looks so chaotic. Yes, in like the best way. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to see what the uh, what they do with this Yakuza game. Yeah, they make they make those games super cartoony, and in a way, the combat yeah. is no different. It's like you're doing attacks that do not make any physical sense for a person to do but you're also a pirate so it really doesn't make exactly. any sense to begin with it's a good uh, time uh they uh, also jo uh, jumped into a more in-depth look of mouse pi for hire uh that yes. is a super interesting game because it is essentially like the 1940s artistic uh uh cell like cell base where they would have to hand draw every cell uh ex so it kind of looks like an old mickey mouse game except it okay. is a first person shooter uh noir detective game uh featuring mice uh, of course because it's mouse for pi um not a whole lot to say but it does look very stunning visually the music was super interesting and, and uh i i will definitely be playing this I was going to say, I, I will say, because I, I love all the different art styles that you can do. And the art style for Mouse looks so awesome. This, this for me, was top three probably on yes. the list uh, of the of the showcases of games. I'm really excited to check out and play because the art style is stunning. So, so cool. Yeah, and like last week we talked about like games that are going to age well. This is one of those games yeah. you could release now. You could have released it 10 years ago. You can release it in 40 years. And yep. the art style is a throwback. It's 2D. I genuinely think this will... will if it's a good game, much like Cuphead, will we'll stand yes. the, the hands of time for sure. Um, yeah. Not much to say about this, but they also did a same-day drop of a game called Blind Fire, where the only way you could... Because you, you're, you're playing in a full pitch black situation, and the only way you can see your environment is when you shoot it lights up the environment so you yes. have to use the gun to see around your environment but it's also from my understanding a multiplayer game so by shooting you're giving away your position to others who are also in the same situation it looks super interesting if i remember correctly uh it dropped in early access uh it is on xbox right now i have not had the chance to jump into it just yet but it looks very very cool it does. It does. Um, they also only teaser on this one, but they showed Subnautica two. Yep. They dropped a teaser. Uh, it will. It's a new alien world. It will have built-in co-op, which is super interesting, uh, and mm -hmm. it will be day one on Game Pass, which we've talked about it before. Game Pass is still probably the best service you can have the monthly. Uh, they they drop. All, all of their day one Xbox games get on there instantly. It's a good time. I'm so I played a decent amount of both Subnautica and the Frozen oh. one, the DLC. Uh, I yeah. never completed it, um, mostly because once again, what happens with these games is other games come in, and then I just forget that I was playing them. Uh, but I will definitely be jumping into the next one. Uh, but they they've created a great alien world before. Can I can I say I, I mean this because I I've watched a ton of content from Subnautica. Mm -hmm. This might be one of the scariest games 
<laughs> that I've ever seen. It it horrifies me just being like uh, like deep in the ocean and far away and it's dark and all of a sudden this giant fish or giant monster comes at you. <laughs> There's something that ju it just it gives me goosebumps just mm -hmm. talking about it. It's make, it, like the game creeps me out and that little uh, trailer they showed for Subnautica 2. I'm like, "Oh god, if I run into something like that, I someday I got to build up the courage to play Subnautica." So, but I'm I'm too afraid. I'm it's it's afraid. a it's a weird situation because Subnautica is actually a very chill, relaxing game. But really? Once you yeah, <laughs> because like most of it is at the surface, but once you start going delving deeper and trying to find yeah. different minerals, find to identify different fish, then you get into these biomes where you're like, oh, the deeper I go, the less I should be here. <laughs> and there's there's a there's a very like I haven't completed it, but there you're on an alien world, so you do start finding out a little bit of lore as you go deeper Ooh, and finding out a lore. little bit about like the 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 lore about the aliens that you are you of okay. what planet you are on. So it's very interesting and then also very jarring when you're like you're you're around coral, it's blue, it's all these pretty fish and then like, oh, that's an alien ship and an alien corpse what the hell is that right so it's it's very interesting and i'm very curious to see what they'll do with subnautica 2 which i believe will be coming out uh sometime next year yeah i gotta build up the courage it sounds awesome mm -hmm. it sounds so awesome uh there was also a handful of third party dark souls ish game that came, that that were mm -hmm. featured uh one was Wu chang fallen feathers uh that is uh it has a, a female lead uh and unfortunately most of these trailers come down to Here's your character. They're attacking, and here's a series of big bosses. But they it, it, visually, right. they looked very pleasing. Until I can get yeah. my hands on it, though, I never thought Black Mick Wukong would be good. To be truthful with you, I just thought like, oh yeah, visually it looks cool. But like once you get in there, like I could never get into Neo for some reason. Just something about mm. it while playing didn't grab me like uh, Dark Souls did. But Black Mick Wukong, the second I had my hands on it, I was like, oh. These people know what they're doing. Like this, this is very good. So I'm very curious to see if this will be one of those. Um, uh, that looks very v pleasing. And then there's another one that they show called Mistfall Hunter, which I think is a multiplayer third person Dark Souls ish game. Um, once again, same idea. They showcase a lot of monsters, uh, but I did not get to see uh, uh, enough to to know at a hundred percent. But uh, yeah. do keep those on those li on your list because uh, if you're into those games, those are coming into uh, sometime next year. Yes. Um, they also showed Legend of Babu, which was uh, truthfully it looks kind of like a dark a third person action, but also a puzzle game where you go around the world. But what seemed really interesting is like there is a magic element to it. You seem to have spells and stuff, and to me. If I'm 100% truthful, the art style is kind of childish, rounded in a way that I don't love. But you are with a giant dog the whole time, and the giant dog is, seems to be featured so prominently that I kind of yes. want to play it because that dog looks cute as hell. Um, that dog... <laughs> That I, dog looks so adorable. <laughs> I, I saw it, and I was like, I, you know what? I'm willing to uh, bypass all of my concerns about this game. I want to be playing with that dog. I want to be friends with that dog. Damn right. I want to be friends with that dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then another one that they, they talked about was Wheel World. Uh, this one's a... I thought visually is very cool. It's a cell-shaded biking game, but it's an open-world biking game, so you could just yes. use your bike and explore, explore the world. But it is almost like... It was weird because at some parts you're, the the sh they're showcase biking and it just looks like a city landscape. But then like it also looked like you could bike in like some alien worlds with like weird like contraptions and stuff. So yeah, very curious. Yeah. You can you can explore. You can uh, you can change your your character model and your your uh, your bike itself and you can race. Uh, it seems to be multiplayer online. And then simultaneously, kind of like how Forza Horizon yep. plays, where you can just go through the open world and then just get to a location that there would be a race. That seems to be what it is, but cell shaded It looks interesting. I'm not sure if it's a game for me quite yet, but it is a game that, because it's coming to Game Pass, I'll be jumping into at least giving an hour or two hours uh, of try. And that'll be sometime next year as well. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, with this Xbox showcase, they really did show some some pretty cool stuff that I'm that I'm definitely excited for. I know yeah. a lot of a lot of people are as well, but it, it's almost like you got a, a little bit of everything with this partner preview. So yeah, and 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 for it to come out of nowhere too, like yeah, it just made you realize like oh, okay, Xbox still has some stuff coming up because like they they're very sure. I wouldn't say secretive, but for their first parties, they have very strong titles, but they they only appear like every couple years. And so yeah. the, that third party support is is very important, and uh, and having Game Pass also they have they invest so much in in independent video games that uh, there's always a gem to have at some point every month. Um, just happy to see the next coming months in, as well. Early 2025 seems like a pretty good time to have an Xbox for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I teased this earlier. That all of that was the good news. Now here's some bad news. Uh, Game Freak. The makers of Pokemon unfortunately just suffered a hack where a lot of their content was leaked. That includes employee personal details and emails, which is bad. Um, the huge leak also includes Pokemon source code, uh, unused designs from previous Pokemon games, uh, Switch 2 details, so details on like some of the specs of their next games as well as like there's a whole subsection called Gaia, and Gaia is like the project name for the Switch 2. And so there's yep. a lot uh, there to, to be looked into. We don't read code, and so to us, it doesn't mean that much. Um, but uh, as well as uh, Pokemon concept art for future Pokemons, um, mentions of a 10th gen Pokemon main title, so what you would expect, another Pokemon probably in the works. Uh, mention yep. of a potential online multiplayer Pokemon game from St uh, Game Freak and Studio ILCA, the studio that remade both Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Right. So they are potentially working on a, a new multiplayer game. Uh, and as well, they seem to be working on an upcoming anime and new movie. Uh, that is all part of the leak. Now, it's a weird thing, you know, because how much is this actually going to impact pokemon i don't know i personally think leaks are kind of cool um in the sense that if you leak something i'm still gonna buy your game unless you're leaking that your company is is committing crimes or, or doing something bad it just makes me feel bad for the company and so regardless i'm still going to be invested in pokemon the thing that i think is bad is the personal information being out there that is terrifying to me yeah, yeah uno I, I was gonna say the exact same thing of course like in any scenario the the personal info and emails and stuff that is that is never a good thing but pokemon is such a juggernaut and like such a monster of a franchise that uh, of course if anything like you said it's going to create more hype around these new pokemon games and they're, they're, people are not going to stop buying pokemon games because some information leaked a little bit early at least at least i don't mm -hmm. think so i'm sure it's frustrating creatively to have these ideas and wanting them to be a surprise and like i totally understand that but is it going to hurt the bottom line for for pokemon i would be shocked if it did i i think if anything more and more people are going to get hyped for it I also think, like, the general populace don't see these leaks. Like, yep. us who's, like, right. deep into, like, gaming news and video games of all kind might know about it. So, they're, like, in the whole world, maybe 20,000 people get their eyes on the fact that there's going to be a new Pokemon. And, you sure. know, maybe that information moves around. But, like, Pokemon sold to millions and millions of people who will never see this information so i truthfully don't think it's ever going to affect them uh, uh yeah. the only big concern for me is much like any leak the second your personal information for people that work there or even the public yeah, i think bad. that's where it's terrifying uh, uh terrifying. And, and of course i'm not saying leak your stuff i think it's bad that source code oh. and stuff that's being worked on for people has been out there i just don't think it will actually hurt game freak um I agree. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. On the personal Same. level, I think it could, uh, but not on that. Uh, what do you think, though? Go to youtube.com slash AEW games and go in the comments section and tell us, do you think this uh, leak is going to impact Game Freak and the sale of future Pokemon games? And of this leak, what is the most infor uh, what the most uh, interesting information is for you? To me, it's that multiplayer game. I think we've been talking about Pokemon yeah. multiplayer online forever. Uh, so I'd be very curious to see what that is all about. 
Uh, and hopefully we will get to see that in the near future. So go to youtube.com slash AEW Games. Go in the comments and let us know what you think. Hey, Chugs, you know what time it is? I think so. It's that I time. It's that is, time, is, my friend. Is it the community mailbag? It's is the it community mailbag. It's time for our favorite yes. segment, but it's happening right after this break right now. And we're back. Welcome back. It is time for the segment. We always say it. We always, every single podcast, we're it's talking true. about it. But you know what? We say nothing but the truth. Uh, um, it's the community mailbag. It's our favorite part of every podcast. We get to answer your questions. You go to tbs.com slash arcade mailbag. And if you're in the U.S., you can ask us questions to be answered at the end of every single All Elite Arcade. Usually we get three or four, and there's always a slew of incredibly good questions. So please Go send yours, and you will be lucky enough uh, uh, to be featured on a future episode of All Elite Arcade. We have three questions today, Chugs. Will you start for me, please? Yes, of course. Starting with Lucas. Lucas, thank you very much for your question. Lucas says, hey, Uno. Hey, Chugs. Hey, Lucas. Uh, we've all had cringy gamer tags in our early years of gaming. What were some of your throwback gamer tags growing up? And how did you come up with them? <laughs> so I, I I know we 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 sort of talked about this uh, at a different time. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna go first because I think none of mine are as interesting as you would think. Uh, I've been a pro wrestler for 22 years now, and I started pro wrestling when I was a teenager, and I already knew I was gonna be player Uno from when I was 15, and. I didn't have online or the internet until I was about 15, 16. I just, uh, I didn't live in a family that owned a computer. We weren't exactly well off. And, uh, and in our generation, it's like we were on the cusp of people having internet in their homes and just going into the next cycle where everyone had it at all times, right? So when I started playing video games and started being online, I was already player Uno, the pro wrestler. So... I've had the same one on all places, and that's been Player Uno SSB. With some exceptions, I think on Xbox, I'm Evil Uno SSB because I, I got the Xbox Game Pass by the time I had made the Switch. So for 20 years now, I've had the same gamer tags. I have no... I mean, sh should I be ashamed of Player Uno SSB? I don't know. But I, I have I no know. shameful gamer tags uh, in my inventory of gamer tags, unfortunately. So... um. For me, again, I, I've been Chugs or Chugs McMuffin uh, since since 2015. Which, um, again, I it's a silly name, but I love it. I love yeah. it. Uh, which, again, to me, I wanted like a gamer tag name to be fun because video games are supposed to be fun. Mm -hmm. So Chugs is what I ended up going with. But before then, um, again, I'm trying to think. I at one point in the early. Halo Combat Evolved or Halo 2 days before I really, really got into games. At one point, uh, the, the gamer tag I would use when I would play some local co-op or every now and then Xbox Live was Avenger 1. Uh, oh, that, well, you got that? That would you could probably sell that account nowadays for sure. <laughs> well, well, I don't I don't know. At that point I didn't have uh like I actually didn't have Xbox Live, so I would, like, go on my brother's account. Oh, you get, like, you the guest still, one. Like, yes, yes. name yourself. Um, but it, especially when I did local co-op, I was I was Avenger 1, which now looking back on it, I, I mean, I'm Chugs. Chugs forever now. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the one that sticks out. I think that, uh, there's <laughs> more weight in future in the Chugs than being Avenger 1. Unfortunately, Avenger I, 1, I you would just so. have... Not not a great SEO. You can't search that and find you very easily. That's for sure. You can't. You can't. It would be, it would be bad news all around. So I'm, I'm glad that, uh, again, when I got super, super into video games in 2015, I've been chugs uh, ever since then. So, um, uh, Great Luke, question, Lucas. Lucas. Thank you so question. much. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I'd be very curious because we didn't have a lot of, uh, of – uh, you know, because sometimes these can be extremely funny. I would like to find out, you the listener, youtube.com slash Games. Please get in that comment. Let us know your Please. silly uh, gamer tag names or or the ones that uh, you, you look at with great shame because I would love to read them. I uh, would love to read those too. Please yes. post those in the comments. Thank you so much. Uh, next question is from JC. JC says, Hi, Chugs and Uno. What do you guys consider the best second date game or games 
to give you some background, I hit it off with a girl that works at my hobby shop, and we already had a great first date at the local fair last weekend. Ooh, congratulations. Um, yes. We both share a passion for video games, so our first uh, on our next date, I suggested that she come over to my place for dinner and some video games. She loved the, the idea, but now I'm overthinking what games we should actually play when the time comes. Also, if you have any suggestions for dinner ideas, I'm all ears. I'm not the greatest chef, but can definitely YouTube it. Thanks, guys. Oh, th this you ready is for this? Cool. Chocolate fondue. Get that chocolate oh, fondue on. There it is. Nothing yeah, more that, romantic than the, chocolate the fondue. Ideas. That's right. Perfect. Done. You've you've set <laughs> um, the deal. You're about to get married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it doesn't matter what game you play. <laughs> um, that is such a good question because there's so many different. Again, this is such a. It's a great question, but such a broad question. Yes. Like deciding what games that the both of you really enjoy. Like the one that immediately came to my mind, which again, I know this wouldn't necessarily work, but it could be really fun if you guys take turns. But like Astrobot is such a yes. fun. I don't want to say it's definitely not mindless because there are some uh, challenges to it. But you could very easily have a full blown conversation with somebody, share lots of laughs and good times, taking turns playing Astrobot. And then the other two that I think of is like, again, I love a good side scrolling beat em up. Um, so TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Oh, yeah. I think it yeah. <laughs> would be really, really fun to play. Um, but yeah, so many different choices. I bet, but either of those games, those two games are, are classics. They're amazing. So you can't go wrong with Astrobot or Shredder's Revenge, in my in my opinion. But Uno, uh, what do you think? I think it's very situational. So obviously, like, yeah. what's yeah. your date into? Like, uh, uh, and also, mm -hmm. what's their video game experience? You know, you can like video games, but are you hands-on? Like, do you want to be a co-op person? Or a lot of people like video games, but they like watching video games. You know, like uh, yeah. uh, either they watch streams or, you know, their their childhood was like watching their sibling play a video game and sitting on the, the, the front lines, you know? Uh, so to me, it's uh, I've got an answer for both. If you like just watching video games, if you have not watched Uncharted 3, if you throw on the intro of Uncharted 2 or Uncharted 3 and just play through that, you're having a cinematic experience, baby. You're watching some pure some some pure action focused video gaming at that point. And I think I think that's a very good one to uh at least cuz like a date's not gonna, you're not I I mean, I don't know. I th maybe you have a 7-hour date, but you're you're probably going to play video games for maybe an hour or two tops. So that might be a very good for, one for you. Another one would be like a co-op game. And uh, It Takes Two, which came out oh. three years ago, I think now, is a pure co-op game. Uh, it's Great a variety choice. of video games. It is ba about a relationship. Now, of course, you are just starting at a date. It is. It would be weird to be a, about a game of a relationship where it is splitting, but do ignore that because it's still very beautiful. It's very uh, animated and uh, a great story, and it has a ton of different games that you can compete with, and also uh, a, not a co-op game where you're going to end up fighting. It is one that is collaborative, and it is you don't hinder each other too much. For like, you know, I, I would actually make one suggestion: don't play Overcooked. Or don't play oh. Mario Party. That's you don't want to test your relationship this early on. Don't play Overcooked. Don't do it. Do not. <laughs> it's great later on if you want to find yeah, out if amazing. this is the one. Yes. Maybe not on game. Not on day two. Uh, definitely save that for a later time. Uh, hopefully, JC, that is some good advice, and uh, I, I hope I yes. hope it works out for the both of y'all. Yes, JC, thank you again for the question. And last up, um, we have a question from. Frank Ducks, and he says, Hey, Chugs and Uno. It was great to see the Chugs back in action last week. You looked great. Thank you very much, Frank. Yeah. My question, my question isn't a game-related one. With Halloween right around the corner, Ooh. I was hoping you could recommend some horror movies, especially ones that are not recent or well-known. Mm. Thank you, Frank. Thank you very much for the question. Uno, what do you think? Anybody oh, uh, I retro? Any modern I have, horror movies? I have a lot. Uh, so uh, w while I didn't get to play a bunch of video games as much this month, one thing I do every single year, when October comes around, Evil Uno's watching horror movies. I watched a lot yeah. of them. I even have a, I have a whole app. I log them in because I got to make sure. I got to make sure I, I'm ready uh, for recommendations because uh, one thing I like to do at AEW, uh, we have a tight-knit group that just watches a bunch of horror movies. And every week, I come in, I'm like, hey, did you see this? Did you watch this? And then we have a discussion. So I'm going to start with some modern stuff. 
Uh, uh, yeah. Right now, my favorite horror movie that you can go see in the theater is called The Substance. Um, it, it uh, The less is said about it, the better. And in fact, I think that's the best way to watch any horror. If you go on a recommendation Agreed. alone and you're willing to watch it, just don't even see a trailer. Just go see it. Uh, but here's a short description. Uh, it features Demi Moore, and it's Demi Moore on the cusp of having to retire from her, her like fitness job. And she is offered a new chance at, at uh, like a, a, a spring of life, essentially a, a new course of life where she can continue being a fitness model. I will tell you nothing else but that it is an incredible movie. It's a wild ride. Uh, it is insane that Demi Moore even said yes to this movie. So if you get the chance, wow. go see the substance right now. It is adult. Most of these horror recommendations. I would not okay, recommend but, it. Okay, but I, I will say, you saying, I can't believe that Demi Moore even did this movie just sold me, dude. Oh, yeah, that's... That just sold me. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I was... That's how I knew about the movie. Somebody said, hey, did you see The Substance? I said, no, I did not. He's like, okay, Demi Moore's in it. Um, She shouldn't be. You should see that movie. And I was like, okay, I don't know. All right, that's enough for me. <laughs> right. Uh, so definitely go see The Substance. I've seen a ton of other stuff. But you want an old recommendation. I actually went to go see this in a theater because it was playing a 35 millimeter version of it. And I liked it so much. It is so weird and wacky. It's called House or Hausu. It's a Japanese movie. H-A-U-S-U. It's from the 1970s. And it is about a haunted house. But it features... So much aesthetic design choices that I would never see in a horror movie that it is so fun to go and watch because it is crazy to think that this made that this is made in the seventies and they take so many weird weird risks in it. Uh, they use green screen. They use C like whatever version of a CGI would be at that time. Practical effects, uh, colored in screens is a very colorful horror movie. And it is somewhat childish, but also it's not simultaneously. Uh, so just so you know, there are children featured, but it will get gruesome at times. So do keep that in mind. Uh, but it is a very strong recommendation for me. That is how Sue, uh, you can find it. I believe it's on HBO, uh, at this moment. So it is definitely available for sure. And then, uh, my last, recommendation one of my favorite movies of all time actually two evil dead 2 and the thing incredible horror movies if you've not seen those and you're a horror fan what are you doing and if you've not seen them and you're not a horror fan this might be where you need to start those two are some of my favorite movies they feature incredible prosthetics uh, uh and and visual effects and just in very very interesting camera work uh, so do check out both of those for sure. Yes. Um, and uh, for me, as far as a, a modern title, I actually would love to talk about this. I know you said uh, some retro stuff, which I'll get I'll definitely uh, get into. But I just watched a horror movie last night for the first time that's fairly new, and it's called Oddity. Mm -hmm. um, and, man, it was so good. So, so good. It, it like did such an amazing job of creeping you out with the camera shots that they used. The story is really, really cool. I went in knowing nothing yeah. and was just totally blown away. It was one of my favorite horror movies I've seen this year because Uno, like you, I watch horror movies a bunch uh, in the month of October. Yes. I, I really watch horror movies all year round. Me too, times, but, me too. And um, just double yeah. down when it comes to October for sure. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, but Oddity is, is amazing if you want to check that out. As far as some, like, Retro recommendations, again, all of these are titles that you've probably heard of or seen, uh, some of the most popular ones. But recently I did watch uh, the original Halloween 2, which, again, I normally watch Halloween 1 every year, yes. and I think everyone does. But it, Halloween 2 is unbelievable. I think it's just as good as the first Halloween. Yes. I love the second Halloween. Uh, really, really well done. So that one. Um, also, The Shining, uh, one oh. of the greatest horror movies ever ever made of all time uh, yes it, yeah if you've if you've not seen that definitely watch the shining i remember watching the shining for the first time when i was like nine and it gave me nightmares for like months <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't sleep but it's such a good movie um and then also again i'm not sure no i think I, i'll consider it a horror movie the original saw uh, oh is, yeah of course is, it is, is. seriously <laughs> that movie is top three favorite movies of all time for me I love the original Saul so much. Um, 
It's so cool to see what they did with what they had. The, again, the story is amazing, and that's all I'm going to say. If you somehow know nothing about the original Saul, mm-hmm. don't look anything up and just watch it. It's incredible. Uh, one of the best feelings ever when, once that movie was done. When, when it so, actually came out, too, it was so surprising to all of us. Because right now, like, yeah. if you... If you uh, haven't seen the movie, you at least know of Saw, and so you have a general idea of what it's like. When this yeah. came out, there was no movie that did things like that before. Uh, nope. Full of incredible scenes, incredible uh, machinery, and just some very, very wild twists. So very, yes. very worth watching for sure. Yeah, definitely worth it. But uh, yeah, Frank, thank you so much for the question. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Hey, anytime we can talk horror movies, uh, uh, I'm extremely happy. In fact, I think uh, next week I will try to bring you more recommendations. Just in general, yes. I'll put in that preamble when we start the podcast because I've been watching so many. I, I do wanted to talk about something real quick because you mentioned it. Halloween 2, incredible movie. Have you ever so seen Halloween 3? I have never watched Halloween 3 start to finish. So Halloween 3 is not even about Michael Myers. They Right? Yes. So like if they wanted to make an anthology about movies based on Halloween the date. And so that when they came to Halloween 3 they're like, "Oh, we'll we'll change it up. It'll be about ghosts, it'll be about other stuff." It is it's so wild because when you see it, it's so disappointing to not be a Michael Myers movie when you think it's going to be. Because I, I didn't know about this until I rewatched all the me- movies later in my life. Because I, I remember yeah. one and two so fondly, and I just assumed three was going to be another one. Um, I, I can't say it's good, but it's definitely yeah. an experience to go watch. So if you're if you're into like okay. if you're into mid horror movies, which I also yeah. am into, <laughs> I go watch Halloween three. Uh, it is just it's just weird to think uh, that was what they were going to try to do with that that series. Right. Right. Um, thank you very much for everyone. Do remember if you want to get your questions answered, tbs.com slash arcade mailbag. We love you for sending out those questions. We are very happy when we get to get them. And uh, uh and always some interesting topics for us to, to address. Uh Chugs, oh, yeah. you're back to the five game cycle. Where can they find you? I'm back to the five game cycle, baby. Again, The Witcher, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, Dark Souls 2, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, Silent Hill 2 bunch of different genres but once again you can find me on twitch.tv slash the chugs playing all different types of games well if you're if you're uh listening to this this week this sunday october 27th evil uno presents mystery wrestling 11 uh our our friend swoggle will be there uh, uh stokely hathaway will be on commentary with me you can watch it completely live for free 5 p.m eastern standard time 2 p.m pacific uh, I do not know UK time. That I think that's 10 p.m. Uh, for UK. Either way, it's completely free, and it's only free while it's live. Do watch it, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, October 27th. Two hours of, of very weird, wacky mystery wrestling coming to you at twitch.tv slash evil uno. See you then. Um, we'll be back next week. All your podcasting platforms, as well as youtube.com slash AEW Games, will have uh, some, some horror recommendations, and almost guaranteed we'll be playing a, a slew of new games because he's back to the oh, five-day yeah. cycle, and I finally have days off this week. I'm so excited to play some damn video games. Oh. Let's see you all next Monday for another episode of Ollie Arcade. Bye-bye.